Okay, I've started off with the blank project again here, and we're going to take a look at object types in this lesson. Okay, it's important to note at this point, and I probably should have noted it during the plug-in lesson, that certain objects are not available in the standard edition of Autoplay Media Studio 5.0. Plug-in objects, list box objects, input, hotspot, and web objects are only available in the professional edition. Okay, so let's proceed and look at these object types. Most of these are self-explanatory. They do exactly what they say. For example, button, label, paragraph, image, video, flash. Um, so let's just start taking a look at them. I'm going to move kind of quick because we're just looking at the object types for now. Later on we'll come back and look at how to manage them and how you can set them up and customize them, etc. So I'm just going to select a button from our gallery and press OK. I'm also just going to insert a label, so insert label and press OK. And then I'm going to go insert paragraph, press OK. And one more and then we'll stop and take a look at them. I'm going to go insert image and I'm going to choose an image from our gallery here and press OK. In this case it's quite large so I'm just going to size it down real quick here. Alright, let's take a look at these objects. They're pretty self-explanatory. We've got a button, a label, a paragraph, and an image. The button does exactly what you think it would do. I'm going to preview the project here so you can see. This button was created in the button maker, and as you can see, it has the mouse over and mouse down effects. The label is the best way to create text labels. It's just a very simple way to get your text labels up. The paragraph object, on the other hand, is the best choice if you have a whole bunch of text to display, not just one little label. As you can see here, it scrolls smoothly, and you can read all the text. You can add any amount of text you want to one of these. Okay, so we've got the image object. It's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing worth noting there is the ease with which you can resize image, images in Autoplay Media Studio and the quality with which it does that. It has a really nice resampling function and uh, the images just stay really nice and beautiful even when you resize them. So unlike other apps, it's really easy to just drop your images in there and resize them to suit. So let's get rid of these objects. They're all pretty self-explanatory and we've gone through them. And we'll take a look at the video object and flash objects. So the video object, same thing, self-explanatory. You just choose a video file and you press OK and you've added it to your page. You have a variety of options for the time display. You can actually create uh, your own custom slider and colors for this area here. And um, you have options for how the time is displayed, the font, uh, color, etc. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You're not going to be able to see a video preview because of the screen cap utility I'm using to make these lessons. But you'll have to trust me when I say that it plays. Um, you can integrate this into any design too. You know, you can integrate any of these objects together. Um, let's take a look at the flash object next. So insert flash. Again, this is self-explanatory. This is any s flash object f that's been created in Swiss for Swish, Swift format. Sorry, whether that be in Swish or Flash or Flash Ants or any of those programs. It's kind of tricky, like a tongue twister. Swifts from Swish. Okay, so we are going to select the Indigo Cube movie for now, for the demo purposes. And there's a variety of options, but we'll look at them later. And we'll insert this on the page. And you can see here that it's playing. We've got a live preview going. And uh, if I preview the project, the flash stays perfectly interactive. Again, you're probably not going to be able to see that video but you'll have to trust me on my end, it's playing perfectly. Um, again, that's just because of the screen capture utility. But you can see the flash here. I can interact with it, spin it in different directions, click it, do a variety of things. So that's the first set of objects. I'm going to take these off the page and we're going to look at these next four that are available in the Pro Edition only. A web object is pretty self-explanatory. It's a ActiveX control from the Internet Explorer web browser. So it's basically an instance of the Internet Explorer web browser that you can add to any of your projects. So you can add a browser now to anything you do. I'm going to preview it. I've set it to go to google.com and you'll see that within our window there it is. We've got a full working browser system in there and uh, if I 
type something into Google, for example, the search works, and we can go to any of these links, and it, it works 100%. So I'm going to take that off the page, and we'll move along here. We've got the hotspot object. There's not much to preview here, but I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to show it to you anyhow. It's a very powerful object, but it's hard to preview, because basically what it is is it's an invisible button, for lack of a better description. And you can place it on top of anything and assign any series of actions to it or um, set it up to interact with other objects. So it's very advanced, but it's hard to preview. Suffice to say that if you want something, say, for example, part of your background to be clickable, a hotspot is the way to go. All right, the next object we're going to look at is the input object. This is a very important one. It's a, I'm going to press OK, it's a input field to allow your user to input things into your application. So you can create advanced interactivity and gather user input. If I preview that, or actually, I'm going to close this application. I'm going to put some default text in here first. Enter name, for example, and then we'll preview it by pressing F5. And you'll see here that it's one of those type of fields where you can go ahead and type your name into it. So for example, if you wanted to gather your name, of your user, that's how you would do it. And you can create any type of uh, interactivity with that information. Once that data is submitted to you, let's say via a button, um, you're able to then take that data and act upon it. So that's an input object. It accepts input from your user. And the last object we're going to look at is the list box object. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You needed some way to manage and create lists in Autoplay Media Studio. Um, so this was our answer to that. And it's very, very powerful. You can create dynamic lists. You can manage these at runtime via actions or your user interactivity. And it's just amazing what you can do. As you can see here, you can add item data, customize the look of this thing and stuff. For now, I'm just going to put some items in there to show you how it works. And we're going to preview it by pressing F5 and you'll see that the items here are actually selectable and there's different options for how they're selectable and what they do and you can click them and double click them and do a variety of things but suffice to say that a list box object is the best way to manage lists whether they're interactive or not okay so that's a overview of the object types from Autoplay Media Studio 5.0 and again I just want people to note that the web hotspot input list box and plugin objects are not available in the standard edition and we'll move on to the next lesson